Yes, but the enemy was very cunning. <laughs> so he could never get anything out of the dealers. All of whom only sold the stuff and weren't privy to the rest of the operation. Recognizing that, my father decided to contact the dealers in secret and cultivate personal relationships with them. Finally, he was able to convince someone to become his informant. The man's name was Jacques. He felt greatly ashamed about his work after seeing many families destroyed by synth abuse. That night, my father hosted a banquet at his countryside estate. He planned to meet up and exchange information with Jacques over some food. But then, we heard two gunshots from the courtyard. We raced to the scene and found my father, still holding a gun, and Jacques, who was already dead on the ground. Huh? How did that happen? Aren't they on the same side? Sounds just like Lenny's case, doesn't it? In both cases, the culprit seemed obvious, but neither appeared to have any motive at all. Looking back on it, though, I now believe the most important clue was something we all overlooked at the time. There were pieces of clothing left at the scene. Precisely. It's all thanks to you that I made the connection now. Back then, we all just thought they were some costumes that Jacques used to disguise himself at the banquet. But, considering it now, it's almost certain that they belong to a third person at the scene. With one extra person, we'll also need to reconsider why the two shots were fired. You're right. We still don't know what happened, but my intuition tells me that we're on the right track to figuring it all out. <sighs> I'm finally headed towards the truth. Jacques was an empathetic man who was infinitely remorseful for his past actions. It's unlikely that he turned on boss with zero warning. I think this third person is probably the key to the full truth. On that note, however, even though this will not please you, demoiselle, as your and your father's butler, I must still offer a word of warning. Our opponent is insidious and cruel. They are extremely difficult to deal with, and Boss has already lost his life trying to bring them to justice. Even though Spina de Rosula has lost most of its former glory, Poisson has welcomed a new time of peace and we have been allowed to live out our lives. There is no need to follow your father's path. It would be both wise and in line with Boss's wishes to step back and give up on the case. If that's indeed what he wished for, then he should have told me that himself. Was I not the closest person to him? And yet I was the one most kept in the dark. What was the point of him dying without sharing any of the secrets he knew? Did he manage to protect anything in the end? Synth is still here. Callus the Unfaithful is still his epithet, and Spina di Rosula is barely getting by. Nothing has changed. Did he think I'd just accept his meaningless death and live out my life just as meaninglessly? I've never accepted that, ever. Not since that day, and certainly not now. I want to find out the real answer for everyone's sake. For the missing girls, for the victims, and for myself. Davia. This is indeed the best moment to act. Your partner appears to be quite reliable, and more importantly, Demoiselle, I think you're also ready to take this on. So you do know something else, Malus? Yes, I do. In fact, even before that banquet, Boss already knew of the connection between Synth and the serial disappearances case. But what drove all the tensions to the boiling point was the revelation that you, Demoiselle, had been selected as the next target to disappear. What? <sighs> Boss also didn't tell you that he had been diagnosed with a rare illness. The doctors told him that he had no more than five years left to live. And the serial disappearances case caused him great anxiety. Five years was nowhere near enough time to resolve this long-standing conflict. But once he passed away, all the danger would pass on to you. Knowing all of this, he decided to use one final intimidation tactic before his death. 
He claimed to have already gotten his hands on some key incriminating evidence for the other side, and even told some members of Spina de Rosula about the details. But as long as you remain safe, he would not share the evidence with the public. If something were to happen to you, then he and all those he told would immediately expose all they knew about Synth and the disappeared victims. Right, so nobody would be able to get off scot-free. As we've seen, Boss's tactic has worked. Even though Boss has been gone for a long time, the other side has not tried to take Demoiselle's life. No, I don't believe it. He never appeared to look sick to me. No father wants their daughter to see them weak and haggard, especially someone as proud as Boss. To him, dying in a duel and suffering lasting dishonor as the unfaithful are still far preferable than losing face in front of his daughter. <laughs> so he chose to die in silence so that he could protect me. I'm afraid you're not understanding this correctly, Demoiselle. What Boss wanted to hand to you was not a parasol, but a sword. If Boss's spirit could hear you telling me that you want to find the answer for the sake of everyone involved, I'm sure he'd be extremely proud. Uh, that fool. <laughs> Couldn't he have just given it to me straight? No. He might have set up everything precisely because... He never thought I'd be able to under- Is that the amount of confidence he had in me? And what if I was never able to make it to where I am now? Yeah. I suppose that's true. With the way he'd set things up, if I had wanted, I could have just lived out my life without a care in the world. But thankfully, he rarely talked to me about complex matters, and thus understood little of me as a person. In this case, he really didn't need to give me an easy way out. <laughs> Malus, what was the key evidence that he shared with you? It's the location where Synth is produced. Essentially, it's the enemy's headquarters. When he was threatening the enemy, Boss didn't share the specifics of the incriminating evidence he found. But if you want to use it against the enemy... You'll still have to take several things into consideration. Why? If we know where the place is, can't we just go storming in? You mustn't forget that we're fighting against a mysterious and dangerous organization that's been in operation for decades. There's no telling what might be lying in wait at their headquarters. We also have no idea what kind of evidence we may be able to find inside nor what people we may be able to capture. But a single visit to their headquarters would be tantamount to a formal declaration of war. The worst case would be that we leave empty-handed, but also open ourselves up to full retaliation. Then, in that case, why not work with the Fontaine authorities? Well, you saw one of them dissolve during Mr. Linney's case. We have no idea just how thoroughly they may have been infiltrated. Huh. That's true. Seems my father really had no choice, but things are different now. It should be a lot easier to prove the other side's guilt, now that we've connected Synth with a disappearances case. You sound like you've put a lot of thought into this, Malus. I am the butler, after all. I live but to serve the boss and Demoiselle's will. I've always been willing to take on any kind of risk for your sake. But considering my relative lack of ability, I've spent my time keeping secrets, performing basic investigations, and waiting for the right time to come. Thank you for all of that, Malus. Have you discovered anything new in the past few years? Let me think. One conclusion I came to was that the enemy must be quite familiar with Spina de Rosula, or at least have an informant planted here. When I announced orders to the organization's members on Demoiselle's behalf, I used to deliberately keep a few people in the dark and observe the reactions of the synth vendors. If the vendors didn't change their plans, then the individuals informed of our orders must be innocent. If the vendors packed up and fled, however, then someone must have given them the news. After several rounds of testing and investigative tracing, I've narrowed the suspect list down to three people. The first is Florent, Spina de Rosula's senior advisor. Huh? Florent? Yes, yeah, surprising, isn't it? 
He was one of the people Boss trusted the most, which also means that he was someone who understood Boss really well. Thanks to his position within Boss's innermost circle, he always knew our upcoming plans and could thus avoid capture this whole time. There's someone else like him too. Marcel, the head of Confrérie of Cabriere. Uncle Marcel. It's a guild in Poisson. A boss helped it to grow to its current size and prominence. In the beginning, they were only reselling some daily goods, but now they're one of the richest guilds around with a lot of business connections in the city. So, they're like a sister organization of Spina di Rosula? 